Good afternoon, good day wherever you are on the cyberspace. Today at the Leader in Action Forum Series, we have guests and we have an audience. We're going to be discussing about one of IDRC flagship program that took place over the last year. The Growth Economic Opportunity for Women program was a program that finished last year. It has been sponsored by IDRC, the Department for International Development of the UK, as well as the Hewlett Foundation uh, based in Palo Alto in the US. And with me to discuss the successes, challenges, and the impact of GROW, as we call it, is Ariane Han. Ariane is the director of our Inclusive Economy Program at IDRC. Welcome, Ariane. Thank you, Jean. As well as Marta Meles. Melesi, that is uh, one of our senior program specialists working in the Inclusive Growth Program at IDRC. Welcome to you also, Marta. Thank you. And welcome to all of you that have joined us for this conversation this afternoon. So, Ariana, I'll start with you. What is the genesis of GROW? Why have we got involved into this uh, and partner with others? So, thank you, Jean. Uh, so, about six, seven years ago, we had conversations with, uh, with, with other international development organizations and, and we jointly felt that there was a lack in knowledge about women's economic empowerment, particularly the economic empowerment. We felt that, uh, that, that more knowledge was needed. We felt that there, of course, was a lot of evidence and studies, but that these were quite descriptive, that they were focusing on the problems and not enough on the, on the solutions. So jointly, we felt and we've, we, 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 we decided that we need to invest in, in that knowledge that was uh, directed at, at providing those solutions. And at the same time, in line with what IDRC does, we, we also felt that there a lot of the studies are generated in, in the global north, in Canada, and this is very important, but that we also wanted to shift the generation of that, the production of that knowledge to our partners in the south. So we also agreed again with those, between those three partners, to, to build a program that, that built, say, the leaders in that field of, of policy research in the global south. And you mentioned that was six, seven years mm -hmm. ago. So that was way before you know the Feminist International Assistance Policy of Canada came into effect. So that was built on a, a body of knowledge we had, and we were perceiving something was coming up. Was it the case? Uh, we did not predict the outcome of the last election, the general election <laughs> in, in, ca in Canada. But but we, uh, I think, working at IDRC, working at the research community, you look at longer term yeah. trends, and and it was the analysis of the longer term trend that the longer term trends that identified those particular gaps. We had seen uh, advances, not fast enough, but adva many advances in gender equality, poverty reduction, and we felt that this particular area needed deeper investment to understanding the. Uh, in very high level and rapidly, what has been the product, the outputs, you know, in terms of, you know, article or seminar or capacity building? Wh what was it in numbers? So I'd say there's three types of uh, outputs. We, we built, contributed to the significant body of evidence that is uh, in the form of some, s uh, I think, 60 high quality research papers. Thir papers, 30 which have already been published and the other are in, in the process of being, uh, being published. And as you know, this takes time, so, so having 30 published already is a significant achievement. With that, we produce, and our partners, with our partners, we produce some 40 policy briefs that distill those key messages for, for a, a, broad, uh, a broad audience. At the same time, as the research was, was being uh, carried out, all our research is engaged very closely with policymakers, and we also in at national levels, at international levels. So we have seen that in in a significant number of cases. I think we have some counted some 30 cases where this evidence was was being used. And finally, the third part of that is that we we uh, we were able to support some 200 researchers in in the global south. We work with northern including Canadian and southern researchers and in that process we worked with some 200 researchers in total and a significant number particularly of young researchers yeah. women but also young men that that have taken this on as a subject of research and and have increased their their ability to to inform policy making in their context uh, and that's quite remarkable in the context that it was you know time bound but right. also covering how many countries altogether these researcher 
came from. So there were, we had a total of 14 projects that worked in some 25 countries in, in detail and, and in total with, with different types of evidence uh, research on some 50 countries in, in total. Impressive. Now I'll turn to Marta because you know the program was structured with five thematics. What were they? So we looked at uh, the care economy. By care economy, I mean how women balance uh, the unpaid care and uh, productive employment, um, with, which is paid employment outside the home. We looked at norms, how gender norms impact uh, women's economic empowerment and the opportunities thereof. We look at broader uh, labor uh, market, how women fare into the labor market, what are the barriers that they face. We look at macro policies, how macroeconomic policies impact uh, opportunities for women mm -hmm. to grow, but also what kinds of patterns of economic growth lends itself to uh, women's economic empowerment. And we also looked across uh, how do we measure women's economic empowerment? What are some of the, the, the tricky things about when we say, you know, we are advancing women's eco economic empowerment? What do we exactly we mean? So we looked at those five areas more broadly. And, you know, if there was one, you know, area, because we cannot cover all the ground, you know, we'll give the website afterwards for uh, checking on the result of all of this. But, you know, let's take one like the care economy, you know, because this is something that, you know, we mm -hmm. look in the global south, but, you know, everyone in this room is facing this, has been facing this, or maybe will be facing, you know, child care, support, policy, incentive. What have we learned from our partner in the south? So one of the things we looked at is, you know, how do women balance between care and unpaid care work? What works to help them balance the two? And we also tested whether uh, uh, providing affordable child care um, is a, a, a way to help them balance the two, but also whether it helps them to integrate better into the, into the workforce. So there um, are a few things that, that, that stood up in terms of our new evidence that we generated. First is, Really, um, when women enter into the workforce, they don't really distribute or redistribute the, the, the work that they carry in terms of unpaid care work. So they carry that on top of that. So this is leading to severe psychological and physical depletion. And we have uh, growing evidence of that that, that, that Measure, came out. Measure, investigate, qualitative, quantitative uh, aspect. Uh, both. 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 Um, so there is a lot of evidence on that, So which actually led us to rethink about how we measure women's economic empowerment because a lot of time getting women into the work into the workforce or into the paid employment is how women's economic empowerment is measured so this the evidence that we collected really um, provided uh, as a space to rethink about you know that's not enough so if we're really serious about women's economic empowerment but if you're really serious about improving uh, gender equality we need to think beyond the labor market yeah. so there are other range of things that we need to take into account so the care economy was an entry point to look at a much bigger picture in exactly. terms of impact exactly now you know this is fascinating because you know it's similar to some of the challenges that we have been facing or that we are still facing in our world that deals with the cultural norm. Mm. So how do we tackle this in research? And I, I'm asking you both. So Achyan, you want to start? Uh, th this was uh, probably one of the hardest things to, to do research on. And it's also one of the hardest things to, to think about what kind of policy should be put in place, particularly as many researchers and policy makers say, certainly if you're based in the, nor in the North, it's not clear whether we have a role in, say, changing social norms that we may disagree with in, in a, country, a country like India. So this is definitely an area where, where we feel more, more research is needed and, and, and particularly where we need to understand better how in the places in which we work, right, because we, we are based again a place in which we work, we have the, who are the, ad finding out who are the advocates, advocates for change and what organizations, what individuals are, are, are pushing for, 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 for that change and, and how we can support that through, through the kind of support that IDRC and, and, and other funders provide. So here it's not only about having the good idea and having the good research framework, it's right. also finding the right partner that exactly. might have exactly. the willingness also to engage at the national mm -hmm. level or regional level right. in a discussion for change. I, and I think that's 
definitely the case for something like the care economy, yeah. those burdens. Yeah. So one thing that, that clearly came out is norms take a lot of time to change, but it is possible to move them. For example, we provided an incentive in one case in Bangladesh to delay, uh, to keep uh, young children at school and that helped to delay marriage which was a norm right yes. so in a way i think that we we had an opportunity to really show where is it that that we can push some of the norms by providing the right incentives but i mean as arian said this is a very difficult thing to tackle but i think we are encouraged that there are things in uh, innovations that can help us move beyond but also it is really central. If we don't tackle the norms, then I think we, we, won't, we won't be able to advance as much. We know that in development, you know, we have a graveyard of projects that were excellent. Mm -hmm. Do you have the sentiment that what we have done with Grow with our partner, with the people that have been our grantees, that we have contributed to go beyond the graveyard of project? And how have we done this? Well, this is, I mean, GROW is a very action-oriented research. So we embedded research to policy uh, connections or research uptake across all the projects, which yeah. meant that in every project, we sought for, actively sought for opportunities for that research to actually be used by the right people. So I'll give you an example, for example, again, going to the care economy. So uh, we, the, our research engaged with the key stakeholders, and one of the key stakeholders was a local uh, governments in Nairobi, because uh, yeah. this was a care uh, in, the, in the Nairobi setting. And that actually helped to really uh, get a proactive engagement of the Nairobi City Council, which is now seeking advice from our partners uh, in terms of how do we go and, and improve the, the child care for low income settlement in the city's um, slums. So, I mean, finding those interventions or points where we can make that linkages is something that we've really strived in the, in the GROW program. Thanks, Marta. That's fascinating because now you have the municipal government that is asking for advice mm -hmm. from its own research mm -hmm. base, mm -hmm. something that mm -hmm. we're aiming with, you know, our capacity building that is often, you know, out a little bit blurred, mm -hmm. but that's a mm -hmm. real concrete evidence. Mm -hmm. Now, Ariane, we're going to close with you the conversation. You're now in the seat of a director of a program area that takes inclusiveness as a key, you know, elements of our programming. What have you learned through that grow experience that you could expand in in broader term internally? We're always good to tell others what to do, but what should it tell us internally? Um, it, it, the, the first thing that, that comes to mind is the issue of partnerships, right? I think we're extremely privileged to work with two other agencies that 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 come from different perspectives but they were all after the same thing they all felt you know we have to we are committed to promoting gen gender equality so working with with those agencies is absolutely critical in the way we produce research in as marta said on, at the national level also in the international level we have to work together with others research and either see research plays a very small part in it it's hard to do i'm not saying it's easy but it's a small part in that in that overall story the, the second thing I would say, and it's also, it, it, it's, it's kind of the team working within an organization like, like, like IDRC. Uh, doing a research project is, is not giving a check to, well, you can't give a check to, 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 to researchers and wait for three years to, to, to find out what came out of it. But what we did and what I think contributed hugely to the success in, in line with the IDRC model is an, what we call an accompaniment model that we, that we work on all fronts of the research processes, which, which, which ranges from even the legal side, from the administrative side, from the financial side, because these provide the conditions for researchers to, to do their work, to supporting them in in terms of, of the, 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 the methodology of the research where needed and, and what we call the research uptake. Some research are very good in making sure that the research is relevant, but we also learned an enormous amount of how you can do that. We invested deeply in that, but it was through the peer learning with all those researchers that I, that I think we, we, we helped to, 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 to get better, get better at this. These are not easy things to do, and, and it was all in, in both externally and internally working with lots of people, getting them behind the same goal. 
Well, this is it for us today. Thank you, Marta. Thank you, Ariane. Thank Thanks you. for the audience for you know participating to our conversation by listening. You can see that you know we don't let half of the world aside when it comes to research for development. The focus of this program on growth and uh, economic opportunity for women has been along different thematic. One of us was explained to us in brief term on the care economy. And we see that it takes multiple sides in order to solve those challenging and complex problems. Marta and Ariane, with their team here at IDRC and with the support of the UK Department for International Development as well as Hewlett Foundation, have created with IDRC a bulk of knowledge. You can have access to this. Contact the website, reach the website at www.idrc.ca, and this will be it for us today in Ottawa. Thank you very much for your attention.